In this tutorial, we'll look at String Helpers in CodeIgniter. String Helper file contains functions that assist in working with strings. Let's go over to our controller where everything starts. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm loading in the String Helper like this. And then we're passing in some data and then we're loading in our view. So let's go over to our String Helper. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm using this link tag right here to include some CSS and let's go down to the random string function so first thing I'm doing is I'm calling the I'm echoing out the random string function and I'm not passing in anything and what that's gonna do is gonna give us eight characters of random letters and numbers so let's take a look at that and you can see that right here and if I refresh here that's gonna change every time um, let's go to the documentation for a second and make this bigger and this random string function we can pass it in different strings and we can pass in these different things and what is that's going to do is give us um, different kinds of random strings so let's take a look at some examples and the first thing I'm doing is um, I'm doing echoing out random string and then passing in alpha right here and that's going to give us a random string with just letters let's look at that and that is right here if I refresh that will change and what we can do is we can pass in um, an optional second parameter which is how many um, characters do we want so here we're going to have 25 random uh, letters of the alphabet, both uppercase and lowercase. You can see that right here. And the next one we're looking at is this alnum. So this is a mixture of alphabet letters and numbers. And let's look at that. So that's right here. And all of these different random string functions we can pass in uh, the second parameter to tell it how many that we want but because I didn't pass anything in there it's just going to be eight characters the next one is numeric so we're gonna get all numbers here like so The next one is passing in no zero. So this is going to be the same as numeric, but with no zeros. And we can see that right here. So this no zero one, I can keep refreshing. And it will give us random numbers, but no zero in it. The next one, we're just doing unique right here. And what this is going to do is going to give us 32 characters, which is going to be an MD5 hash and we can see that right here so random string passing in unique and for this one we can't pass in a second parameter of how many we want because MD5 hashes are always 32 characters so I can refresh here and we're gonna get different random uh, MD5 hashes and the next line here I'm just I'm checking the length of it running strlen on it the next one is a uh, random string I'm passing in SHA1 which is similar to the MD5 hash but it's a longer hash code and we can see that it's 40 characters there and let's go to the next function so the next one we're gonna look at is this alternator function okay and let's first go to the documentation for that and we have a for loop here that's looping 10 times and we're, we're echoing out this alternator function and passing it two strings string one and string two and what this is going to do is every time um, this loop has an iteration it's going to alternate this one like that and then that one and let's see that save that and refresh And here we can see I've done it three times 
and each time I'm getting one, two, one, two, one, two, and so on. Now you might be wondering why did I do this three times? And with when we're just passing it two parameters, you'll notice that nothing weird happens. It's exactly as we expect. But let me show you what happens when we do the same thing, but we pass it three parameters. So here I'm passing in one, two, three, and then doing again one, two, three, one, two, three, and I'm doing that four times. And let's see what happens. And refresh. And very interestingly, we're getting different results each time. Okay. Now you might be wondering how is that possible because if we go over to the code we'll see that we did the exact same thing in every time. We're looping 10 times and every time we're doing the alternator function and we're passing in this 1, 2, 3 each time. So how was it that we got different results each time? And I'm going to show you why in a second. Before we do that, let's look at one more example of this. So here I'm doing this loop four more times with alternator and passing the same thing one two three four and let's see what we got for that and you can see we get different results again here here we're starting with three and here starting with one and then three and then one and the reason for this is because of a static variable in the alternator function and let me show you that So first, let's um, actually let's open up uh, the um, where this alternator function is stored. Let's take a look at that. So we'll go under System, and then Helpers, and then we'll go down to String Helper, and it's right here. So if this function doesn't exist, okay, then we're going to run this function, and you'll see at the top of the alternator function, it's creating a static variable i. Okay, and this is the reason why the output of that function was different each time is because this is a static variable. And I'm going to show you an example. Um, if you're not familiar with why this is different, then I'll give you an example to show you why. So let's go back over to our view. And I just made some notes here. Um, Static variables are not garbage collected after the function finishes its invocation and they will persist in the function scope until the end of page execu execution. So the reason is is that um, after this after we ran this um, this function alternate function for the first time we affected the static i variables value and that value is being changed all throughout the script until the script was finally finished. So let's look at an example of static variables. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a function called test static, and this function takes a number. And then we are um, creating a static variable 5, and then we're echoing out that variable, and then after we do that, we're setting the static variable to this integer that we passed in and we're running the function three times here. And let's see what happens. And refresh. And you'll see we got three different things here. Five, one, two. Um, that might not be the clearest way. I can just, we can do this the same time with one each time. And you're gonna see that they're not all the same. We're gonna get five, one, one. So if you don't understand static variables, look closely at this and see why. And what you'll see that um, that this this variable it persists in the function even after the um, invocation on the function is finished. And this will persist all the way until the script finally finishes and, and the web page is done loading. Let's go to the next one. Um, here we're looking at the repeater function. So this function is pretty simple. Uh, we take in what do we want to repeat, a string or a letter or whatever, and then how many times we want to repeat it. Let's look at that. Okay, and here I've just repeated Z 10 times.
The next one is the reduce multiples function. And um, here I have a string, and the string is comma separated values, but there's some irregularities in the string. We can see two commas here, two commas here, one comma here. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the reduce multiples function on this string as the first parameter, and the second parameter is the comma. So it's going to look to see if there's more than one comma in one place. You can try like that. And if it finds it, then it's going to reduce it just down to one comma. And let's refresh here. And you can see now we have just one comma separating each one. The next function we're looking at is quotes to entities. So here we have a string with a single quotation mark in it. And we also have two escaped uh, double quotation marks. And what we're going to do is we're just going to convert this to the entities. And we're going to get a result just like this. OK, so it, it sees this, and it sees this, and it converts that just to the quote. And we also have the single quotation right here. And let's look at that. And here we have Joe's dinner. The last function that we'll look at is reduce double slashes. So here we have a URL, um, and it has two slashes here, and it has a whole bunch of slashes here. And this function knows that it shouldn't reduce these double slashes to one slash. But everything else should be reduced just down to one slash. So let's run this. And you can see we get a normal URL like so. Thanks for watching.